Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to EIG's 61st webinar, a fireside chat discussion with our guest experts from the industry, Danny Kaplan from SMC Data and Greg Schlegel from the Supply Chain Risk Management Consortium. We are looking forward to an interactive discussion with each and every one of you. We hope that you find this as useful as we do and we hope that your family are healthy and safe. Again, we appreciate you taking the time uh, to join our webinar series here, and we look forward to your interaction. Uh, this is the fourth webinar in our series of end-to-end -end supply chain visibility uh, of the five webinar series. And this webinar focuses on creating supply visibility to make informed decisions and we're gonna cover three or more best practices on fortifying sourcing to deliver faster than your competitors. So uh, again, this is the uh, a webinar series that we focus on here at EIG. We focus on people, process, data, and technology to solve fulfillment programs, problems, improve cash flow, enhance customer ex experience and increase your revenue and your margins. Therefore, our discussion will demonstrate how ERP implementation do not need to be disruptive throughout this process. So we'll be addressing all those issues in today's webinar. Thank you again for joining. My name is Jim DeVries, founder and president of Enhance International Group. Uh, we're an exchange of passionate experts to guide transformations to provide self-generating and self-funding results. We have over 50 consultants, consulting companies, and SaaS providers uh, to provide uh, thoughtful leadership that provides you that are vetted best in class. Uh, EIG is like a master integrator to provide you the best and the brightest companies we're, and we act like a Swiss army knife. Our team is dedicated to empowering your organization's workforce by leveraging EIG's partners, uh, thought leadership. And our goal is to meet or exceed your expectations with customized, predictable, sustainable, and repeatable 90-day self-funding programs, providing you the competitive advantage. With us today, we have highly esteemed leaders in the field, Danny Kaplan and Greg Schlegel. Danny, a few words. <clears throat> Sorry, we have supply chain, integrated supply chain software for manufacturing, distribution, of food, mid-market, the single database that enable manufacturers to perform distribution function, distributed uh, perform manufacturing function, and a food company is, is have distribution and manufacturing uh, function. It's for the mid it's for the mid market. Thanks, Danny and Greg. A few words, Vendor. You bet, Jim. Uh, appreciate uh, everyone taking the time. Pleasure to be here with you. I'm the founder of the Supply Chain Risk Management Consortium. It's uh, 30 companies, about 1,500 uh, supply chain risk professionals. We'll talk a little bit more about the consortium. I've taught uh, supply chain risk management at Lehigh University for 10 years. I still teach ERM, Enterprise Risk Management, at Villanova University. Uh, spent uh, eight years with IBM as a supply chain executive consultant. Spent 30 years, maybe like many of you, as a supply chain practitioner and exec for several Fortune 100 companies. And I've taught supply chain management at six different universities here in the United States and was past president of the organization called Apex, now coined ASCM. Back to you, Jim. Thanks, Greg. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, uh, this is the fourth in a series of webinars. Our fifth webinar will be on July 29th. We also have a 90-day supply chain risk and resiliency webinar coming up on July 13th. And then next week, we have a readiness, a supply chain readiness webinar, tier three on July 27th. 
We in the fall we'll be kicking off webinars and new product introduction, blockchain, and digital twins. So with that, uh, we'll have uh, Danny kick us off here with a little bit of background of SMC data. Danny, my background is consulting. We've been here in business for forty years. In '85, I made I'm executive, and in in the '90s, I took a company to help a company go from six to forty-five million dollar to M and A. It's the software is for manufacturing distribution of food, single database. It's totally integrated. So it enables company to do multiple functions in today's uncertain reality. It also have analytic software that tells you what to buy, <coughs> sorry, when to buy and how much to buy. In today's reality, people have either inventory shortages, or surplus of inventory, because they did not have good analytic or the customer demand is. Next to you, Jim. Thanks, Danny. And Greg, a little introduction. <clears throat> yeah, you bet. We uh, said we'd talk a little bit more about the consortium. Uh, it is 30 companies, about 1,500 uh, professionals around the globe. These companies bring, as you can see on the right, they bring tools, techniques, methodologies, and solutions to help us identify, assess, mitigate, and manage supply chain risks. That's all we do. We have three pillars, education, we do a lot of that, consulting, and then software as a service. On the left is what we provide. We have two online education uh, courses that are well attended, been in that business for about four years now, hundreds of people coming through our online supply chain risk and resiliency education, culminating in certificates. We do virtual training like this. We do about four webinars a month since back in April of 2020. We do classroom training, remember that, face-to-face. Uh, -face. We're hoping that comes back. We used to do 25 classroom training sessions a year around the globe. We are into supply chain risk awareness and mitigation. We bring best practices from our best-selling book. We coach companies. We help companies build supply chain risk war rooms. We bring uh, solutions, and we're very excited to talk about two new online assessment. One is supply chain management readiness assessment, which we'll talk about today. And the other is a prescriptive online uh, supply chain risk and resiliency 90 day action plan. So that's who we are. That's what we provide back to you, Jim. Thanks, Greg. And with that, I, I'll just uh, give you a little background about EIG. Uh, EIG, as I said, is 50 companies uh, focusing on uh, consulting, consulting uh, and uh, education, as well as uh, SaaS, uh, SaaS solutions. And so uh, we like to sum up everything in this slide. We have folks that are focused on strategy, other folks in, and more on the tactics and more on execution like in Greg, with Greg. So uh, each of our uh, consultants and consulting companies and SaaS solutions, as you can see, are focused on driving, driving that uh, for you. So you can look at our, our, our ecosystem here and you can see that the strategy wheel contains the, the vision and the brand, which is in this case, supply chain risk and resiliency as a priority, intrinsic value, operating structure. And then from an execution perspective, you're gonna get many rotation cycles out of a clear strategy through clear uh, tactics so that you have, you can drive many execution cycles with your visibility, operational risk management and enterprise risk and resiliency. We offer 90 day action plans. All of our partners are, are there to help you come in and out as quickly as possible for us. And we are there to help you make more informed and empowered decisions. With that, we're gonna get it started with the, uh, the overview here on the different webinar series. So we have webinars one, which we uh, focus more on the uh, <clears throat> end-to-end -end visibility of the supply chain. Webinar two is on the front end, 
on the demand cadence. The third webinar focused on balancing supply and demand with push and pull inventory. And today's webinar is focused on the supplier side. Our last webinar will be focused at the end of July on M&A. With that, we thought we'd start off with a cartoon and, and uh, get all of your, uh, your uh, feedback on it. And, and uh, with that, this is the, the supply chain state of the business. And for me, where I'm working with and with my consultant company, that uh, we are actually uh, in the throngs of this. And I think everybody's feeling this, you know, where there's a lot of blame going around, uh, a lot of trying to find out what the root cause. Sometimes we have overages, sometimes we have shortages. Orders are being delayed, our customers are getting upset. We have a growing backlog and a loss of customers. And we don't know when the inbound shipments are coming because of the supply chain clogging up. And the customers, meanwhile, are very frustrated and asking, where are my orders? Greg, a few words. Uh, yeah, I thought uh, it's a very interesting uh, cartoon, uh, pretty much comprehensive. My first flush reaction in our line of business is it demonstrates and depicts what we call the VUCA world. What does VUCA stand for? Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. That's our landscape at the, at the moment, folks. I'm sure you're wrestling with it every day, just like us. Uh, that was my first blush reaction to uh, the state of this cartoon. With that, I think we'll get started on the agenda. We're going to be talking a little bit about what's going on as that cartoon uh, showed, uh, shortages and overages, uh, some best practices in supplier management, uh, and then how ERPs, leveraging ERPs can help you in that journey. And then uh, Danny will go through supplier management success story and uh, some uh, ERP benefits through VAI. Okay, so with that, Danny, you want to kick us off with this? Basically, we are facing a tough reality. It started with the call vet of being shortage of inventory because multiple countries had closed the door and in with all the plants and shortage of people. Next thing is the Ukrainian war started. We created a brand new situation. So now we have a multiple issues of getting supply from multiple places. And it's a, a real issue now, juggling the ball in the air, how much you have in inventory, what to order, who to order and how much. Even if your vendor is your, uh, done with you, it's your, it's your most reliable vendor, the reality is that it, his inventory or her inventory might be one of 50 ships of the California coast. So you must have an alternate vendor to just in case the one you work with cannot deliver it, get to somebody else. Otherwise your production line will come to have, to have disruption production line and order will be canceled or charged back. A good example is the, the change, the, money, the big car manufacturer plants who are closing plants now because of the short of the chip. Also in the showroom, you might often find out that somebody told me last week, they saw a Mercedes for $130,000 that the radio and the GPS is missing. The car is being sold at a discount price because they want to eliminate the charges by the, by the bank now. So this is the reality we are facing now. Thanks, Danny. Greg, any uh, comments on that? Or... No, nah, we, uh, well, that, that kind of says it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it was a very good, well, overview. So, uh, Greg, you can turn your video back on, I apologize, uh, and go ahead and uh, this is your slide about the impact of that. Yeah, yeah they um, essentially, uh, this is uh, a picture of uh, Shanghai. Um, essentially back in uh, April 
and uh, uh, <laughs> we affectionately call this in supply chain uh, a dog's breakfast. You know, the question is, where is your container? Uh, and, and we all know why it's like this. Uh, we also call this 10 pounds in a five pound bag. So, you know, there is there is always latency in our supply chains, which is lead time, lag time. Uh, but the, these types of risk events, e external, geopolitical and or other type of risk events, which we don't control, essentially just uh, exacerbate our uh our latency in our supply chain, a la the cartoon that Jim showed. So we wanted to share that with you. That's in April uh, of this year. I think we have a couple of other interesting uh, nuances associated with supply chain. This one just came in from McKinsey and The Economist. We wanted to share it with you. <laughs> they called it yanking the chain, <laughs> uh, but essentially, uh, and uh, McKinsey, if you can get some good, if you can, get, if you can get your hands on some McKinsey reports, they're they're doing a terrific job of going deep in supply chain risk management. So just to give them some kudos, this one was a survey a host of uh, executives across the globe back in March and April of this year, and we just wanted to show you. They asked uh, questions about what were you doing in May and April of last year, and what are you doing this year, uh, May and April of this year, in terms of um, uh, in terms of supply chain risk mitigation tactics and so forth? The light blue is what you were doing last year, and the dark blue is what they're doing this this year, and it's pretty compelling. Dual sourcing raw materials much greater, uh, uh, and that's encouraging to us as risk and, uh, evangelists. They're increasing inventory along the supply chain. Why? Because you have to, because of latency. They're attempting to regionalize, meaning bringing uh, you know, more work nearer your manufacturing or distribution center. The nearshoring, increasing supplier base, that is encouraging to us because that's our advocation of you should have alternative suppliers, especially if they're key. Uh, expanding backup production sites, that's all good. That's about the same. And then nearshoring production, that seems to be adding up. So very encouraging because this gives you a sense of uh, we're, we're talking about efficiency supply chains. We have very efficient supply chains. That's from a cost point of view. We've never really thought about designing our supply chains for effectiveness, which is resiliency. So that's why we share this profile with you. Very encouraging to us. I think yeah. we have a couple more. And just I just to add to that, you know, I, recently I saw in the paper there that 20% uh, of China is down 20% also. So it's starting to affect China. So we're, the, these things are real. These, the onshoring and the reshoring of, of, uh, of products bringing, brought, brought out of China and across because of these, these issues, we're, it's starting to make a dent. Um, and we've been talking about it for two years, two plus years, but it's starting to happen now. So there's even a more, a bigger rerouting of the supply chain and more adjustments that will be happening. We're just starting it, starting now, I think, in the last three to six months. Mm -hmm. Greg? Yeah, we have a couple more. We said we'd share with you some interesting statistics. This is third-party risk management, which is actually what we're talking about. Third-party risk management are your suppliers and and even your customers. But this one is geared around suppliers and it comes from friends of the consortium over on the right, Rapid Ratings. They are forensic analysts. They can dig and scratch and try to provide you financial health data. Uh, so they've been in the consortium for a good long time. That's what they do and they're pretty good at it. But we wanted to share this infograph with you, top down, left to right to say, who are your third parties? Well, they come in all shapes and sizes, that's true. But why do we harp on third-party risk management? 
because on the on the left side of the graph, there your suppliers' risks are your risks, folks. It comes up to the top, and we wanted to share this one number with you. What they've done again they're forensic analysts they've been doing this for a good long time they've come up with an estimated number of one to three million dollars to basically say if you lose for any reason a key supplier in your supply chain it will probably cost you anywhere from one to three million dollars over time to replace that key supplier all right so we just wanted to share with you. The net net is you got to watch the supply store. Someone's got to be watching the store when it comes to supplier financial health. So that's what we wanted to get across to you on this slide. This one, I won't, uh, I won't uh, uh, talk too much about it. This is our COVID-19 W recovery and the three R's. We put this together back in April of 2020 when Jim and I were getting constant information from our 30 companies about what's going on around the globe. The net net was we put together a uh, W-like recovery squiggle. You can see it. The top x-axis in blue are the lockdowns that we can't control. On the left-hand side, we put together demand and supply imbalance areas. And then on the bottom, we ended up with three different types of phases that companies would probably go through in terms of how to uh, mitigate this, uh, these demand and supply shocks. So you can see it, respond, recover, renew. You can see the amplitude of the bullwhip effect all right, I'm sure everyone's familiar with that, but essentially early on in the lockdowns, uh, we had a lot of response or lack thereof and demand and supply went totally out of kilter. As we get into recovery, companies started to reduce their portfolios. They were reinventing their supply chains. They were getting new customers, losing older customers. And then in the Renew, which many, where many of the companies around the globe are at the moment, from our observation, is they're still reducing their portfolio. They're rescaling their supply chain. They're reinventing themselves and they're trying to handle new channels and survive and thrive in this COVID VUCA world. So we wanted to just share with you uh, that picture. You'll have it in the uh, slide deck. And with that, I'll turn it, uh, I think I'll turn it back to Jim and he can look think, at the agenda. No, I think it's back to you, Greg. Oh, okay. Well, uh, it's just that we're, we're now going to get into best practices in, in supply chain. And I think we have a, a picture image. Yeah, we do. We said we'd, uh, we'd uh, talk about one of our online tools. This is our supply chain management readiness assessment. We've, uh, we've been uh, in the supply chain management business for 30 some years. We took that experience and 12 years of risk management and developed this supply chain management readiness assessment. Uh, at first, there are 13 tenants. You can see them on the outside of the graph. Uh, they're color coded to the blue are strategic, the red are what we consider tactical, and the uh, the army green on the left hand side is what we consider operational. So the star chart is a maturity model, folks. It depicts how mature your company's supply chain processes are at any one point in time. And remember, the lower the number the closer to the center means your supply chain processes are more mature, all right? As you go through, the, there's about 100 questions. You can see the company's response. The company's response would be in black, all right? Uh, the farther away from the center, uh, which means that, that means you're less mature in terms of that supply chain process. The secondary, element of this assessment is risk levels. You can see 
Uh, we have three different risk levels. You can see the green circle around uh, level three. That's where the exemplars operate, the IBMs, the Coca-Colas, the Cisco's, the Nokia's, the Ericsson's, uh, the Philips Electronics. There are many, many out there who have very mature supply chain processes, which provides less risk. The orange provides you a level of risk where we, we talk about you're moving forward, but if you're in and around the orange while well, you're less mature and you have more risks. And then we have the red, which is what we call the ring of fire. Essentially that if you're near that, that says your processes are very immature and you have more inherent risks. So it's kind of a twofer. You get a sense of your supply chain maturity from a process point of view, and then you also get a picture image of inherent risk. So with that, I'll, I think I'll turn it back to Jim. Great, Greg, thank you. Um, and what we want to get into now is, you know, getting down to the more nitty gritty, uh, you know, looking at supplier uh, management best practices. We said three, but we couldn't come up with three. We came up with four. So, and those are at the high level. So the first two that we're going to talk about is total cost of acquisition across all related processes. And here you have the full anal analysis of total cost impact of the supplier and all the cost reduction initiatives, including unit costs, quality breakpoints, lead time, lead time variability, yield adjusted, unit uh, level versus uh, price adjusted comparisons. So that's the one, one, one. And then the second one there is control to landed cost that you get in logistics also. You need to control that, you know, down to the cost to per SKU, including inventory carrying cost uh, of goods, transportation, accessorials, unbundling all of this inbound freight that you have. There's a great opportunity there. Uh, sometimes you, we're getting things and we don't even know what we're paying for. So that's the second one. And then online auctions, uh, the cost analysis, you know, to do online auctions for indirect material and commodity items is a, another best practices. Then you get into the next area. We'll be covering in detail in the next few slides, the VMI, the consignment, the postponement. Uh, and then we, there's other best practices here, the vendor lead time updates as is to support purchasing. Of course, uh, we don't, we're not going to talk about that today too much. And then uh, the buying, buying cards, P cards, if you don't have those to, to drive uh, alignment. So the next set of best practices are supplier relationships. We're not going to talk uh, 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 about these today in detail. We just don't have enough time. And then inbound visibility and uh, using EDI and so forth, and advanced ship notice, the TMS and uh, track and trace. So there's a lot of best practices out there. We try to assemble some of them. This is of course not all best practices in supplier. So don't hold me to this list, but, or us to this list, but this is a pretty good list. If you're doing all of these things, you're probably doing pretty well. And you're being able to weather this uh, pandemic pretty well. So what we like to do is get into it and I'm, we're gonna have Greg kick us off here, Greg. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jim. Uh, we got a couple slides here where we'll go through. We, we put some pictorial views together, and I'm just going to uh, highlight uh, and maybe give you some definitions, especially from uh, ASCM, you know, which is uh, uh, the certification body for supply chain management. This one is standardized electronic transactions kind of uh, in the retail mode. If you look at the chart from left to right, it, it more or less think of it as from exporting to importing. And let's go, let's go through the uh, three levels and we'll, we'll give you some uh, insight. On the left, essentially a purchase order, you know, you, you got a PO and away you go. Uh, you get into uh, shipping the product. And then uh, as we move left to right, there's a exporter boarding crossing. Uh, I will say that if you're shipping material and product worldwide, one thing you might want to think about is something called CTPAT. It stands for Customs Trade Partnership Against Terrorism, CTPAT. It's a, kind of an ISO 
type of survey, you got, it's very detailed. But if in fact you do that as a shipper, your product and services will flow through customs like a hot knife through butter. You get pushed to the front of the line, just so you know. Once you're through that border crossing, now you have multimodal uh, booking, tracking, tracing. That's essentially maybe RFID, and you have passive, and you have uh, active. Uh, that's also part of a, a cold chain if you're in pharmaceutical with drugs and so forth. As you move left to right, you uh, have your PO, your ASN. Um, Jim will talk about that commercial invoicing, regulatory filing. And if you move through uh, the logistics now, you're at the import border crossing. And that essentially, again, is CTPAT. If you have it, you go through it pretty quick. And then as you move through to the customer, something to think about, there's something called INCO terms whether you're aware of them or not, but they're widely used terms of sale. There's about 11 of them and they define the responsibilities of the sellers and the buyers. All right. So in code terms specify who's responsible for paying for and managing the shipment insurance documentation, customer clearance, customs clearance, and other logistical uh, activities. So um, just wanted to give you a sense of that before we move on to VMI. Okay. Jim? Uh, VMI is yours, babe. Great. Okay. You bet. Can you see the screen? Yeah, I can. I can see it again. We, we try to give you uh, a picture image. Uh, what I just want to do from left to right, VMI is vendor supplied. Uh, uh, managed inventory customers on the right. Essentially, I'll just give you a definition uh, so that you can uh, kind of noodle on it. It's optimizing supply chain performance in which the supplier has access to the customer's inventory data and is responsible for maintaining the inventory level required by the customer, accomplished by the process in which the resupply of that particular vendor's product is reg regularly scheduled. Uh, they're responsible for uh, keeping it at a certain level, uh, all the, uh, the returns and so forth. So vendor managed inventory, it's a great deal if you can get it as a customer. Uh, a lot of times uh, I'm an old chemical manufacturer, a lot of times they use uh, uh, tele, tele, telephony, uh, where they uh, can check on a, uh, a chemical company's uh, level of uh, raw material, and that uh, automatically produces a replenishment order, and the vendor comes and fills the product uh, tank or whatever back to uh, the replenishment level. So it also, it's continuous replenishment. Uh, it's pretty good deal. Uh, normally, it's pretty cost effective, especially if you have a very good uh, supplier and a relationship with that supplier. Uh, and it's more or less uh, called consignment, uh, consignment stock as well. So uh, that's to us, that's vendor managed inventory. Postponement. Uh, essentially, uh, I want to, it, this is a busy slide, folks. I won't, uh, I won't try to uh, uh, say it's not. Uh, what I thought I would do is I'd just give you another definition of uh, postponement. Think of it this way, all right? Product design, supply chain, it's a supply chain strategy that deliberately delays final differentiation of a product, whether you're assembling, you're producing, you're packaging, you're tagging, et cetera and you wait until the very, very, very last possible time in the manufacturing packing process. What that does is it shifts differenti the product differentiating closer to the customer, all right? To reduce what? To reduce risk of producing the wrong product. Remember, when you produce a finished product, if it's purple, green, or orange, you are expecting and hoping that the customer will buy purple, black, or whatever. What uh, many companies do is uh, they wait till the very, very, very last moment. They get an order. 
they configure that product and uh, that product is configured exactly to what the customer needs. Therefore, that manufacturer is reducing their risk. Why? Because a finished good is the highest priced element in your product portfolio, and it's the most risky you know, in terms of write down, write off, and obsolescence. So we just wanted to give you a sense of postponement. It's out there. Uh, computer industry uses it, automotive it uses it, even the airlines use it. So uh, with that, I'll uh, turn it back to Jim. Thanks, Greg. Great overview. Very much appreciate it. Uh, what I want to get into a little bit is advanced ship notices, ASNs. Uh, and uh, these are two examples of advanced ship notices or sometimes called uh, ASNs at 856s. Uh, and they can be uh, shown here with the XML file and the same file uh, that is uh, converted to EDI. So ideally, you want to be doing this with EDI. EDI can cost you $20,000, $30,000 per connection. So you want to uh, make sure you're doing it with your high volume suppliers. But there's a lot of other options besides EDI in this and uh, in, in getting advanced ship notices. You can be sending, they could be sending you an A a uh, CSV file there as well to get that advanced ship notice. But the main thing is you're getting that ASN and it looks, uh, you know, uh, it, it provides you that uh, PO acknowledgement that you need. And step one here in, in this is on the right side. We'll just look at that. The buyer in the ERP, ERP uh, uses the uh, procurement module to issue the purchase, purchasing documents, the contracts, the scheduling agreements, the leases, and also creates the, the uh, technical freight units, which belong in the ERP transportation management solution. So, you know, you got the consignment there. This is, this is how we talk uh, with our suppliers and the more we can automate eliminate those crazy emails going back and forth between you and your suppliers. When is it coming? What is coming? All, all those questions, especially right now when we have these lead time issues uh, that are changing every, every so often and, and really causing havoc, which goes back to that cartoon that we were talking about. So you can get ASNs from your, your suppliers. You can get them from the carriers that the suppliers are providing you. Again, getting that transparency uh, for you. So we really believe that this is a, a very good best practice to have and will be needed for even more and more as, as, as we go on. Uh, so uh, that, that, they, these are the uh, ASNs. I was just looking for the Q&A. Uh, and then the next one that I like is, is the track and trace uh, throughout the yard. So uh, just knowing what's coming in, when it's coming in, having a yard management system, you know, online, there's many, many different solutions out there today. I highly recommend you look at them. Uh, there's dozens and dozens of solutions. And at this point in time, they're all probably uh, equally good. But if you're doing this in Excel or you're not doing it at all, or you're just trying to enter the, the goods when it enters, uh, and you don't have a dock door management system for your carriers coming in inbound, that's, that, that causes havoc. You can do it in Excel, but there's very cheap solutions that are three to $500 a month for a yard management system. So why not implement that? With that, I think we're gonna move on to leveraging ERPs to fortify uh, uh, sourcing to deliver faster than your competitors. And with that, we're going to come back to the slide that we used in our last webinar and we introduced you to. It. It's a very busy slide, but it's, it, these are all the ingredients of an ERP. And I highlighted in the center MRP planning. That's what we're, we're getting into here and in the procurement and production area. Uh, that's, you know, the connection of the warehouse to the, the, the production floor. And these are all the areas when we're talking about, when we talk about supplier management, the EDI 
to the business, both inbound and outbound, uh, to your customers and to your suppliers, uh, your purchasing area, your quality management, your warehousing. So all these modules are absolutely critical uh, as we set up for Danny to be on the next slide to talk about, start getting into the best practices from an ERP perspective. So Danny, you can turn on your video and uh, uh, please do uh, share with us uh, the, uh, this, this uh, next few slides here. Thanks, Danny. The, the most important thing is your relationship with your supplier. If you don't have good relationship, you, you might go into su supply chain issues. And with VAI, we have automated purchasing system that allow you to react to the changes very, very quickly. Supply and demand is a, is a big issue and we have to really keep track what you have in stock, what you allocate against inventory, what you allocate against future orders and what is your net inventory and when it will when and <clears throat> when would the next order will come? Another issue is relying on one vendor. If the vendor that you rely on has his inventory in mid in mid water of the best, of the coast of California, with his best intent, his entire intention, they can supply to you. So you have more, you need to have multiple vendors to be able just as a, as a backup. Sometimes you're better off having more inventory you need rather than running the short inventory affecting the production line and future orders that will result if you ship them late, you get cancellations or charge back. Charge back. You build $100,000, you get paid $80,000 by the main stores. But that's a very important factor to, to keep in mind you cannot rely on one vendor. You need to rely on multiple vendor just in case something goes wrong. The car industry is a good example. If you buy a car today, you pay prime price above, li above, above list, and you have to wait for a long time before you can get the car. Next slide, Jim. Sure. Sorry. You go ahead and I'll... Sorry, I don't know. Keep. Sorry, go ahead. We have to be, you have to, the buyer, the VAI software allow you to take advantage of the buyer cost saving by purchasing the, from the vendor at the lowest price. But it, it, the two sage or <clears throat> it's a, a two-edged so, sword. You might get the best price but might not be the right delivery time. So before the call vet, the main issue, I mean, just as time was available, the main issue was give me the best price and ship it to the warehouse or drop it to the customer. Today, second, the cost is secondary. Where can I get it first? And then the cost becomes secondary because if you don't get it in time, you run into multiple issues. You need to have multiple weight, pallets, and inventory, so just what the best quantity to buy and from whom. Next slide, Jim. Yeah. Can you see it? Supplier management success story. We have a couple of supply chain management. This is a tip, this is, a, this is an interesting story. <clears throat> The two men on the left were, when they were 18 years old, they were ski bums in La Lalo, Vermont. And they bought a used VW van selling to the stores in Rat in Vermont area. Today they're up to $76 million, 600 employees, or $78 million, and they've grown quadruple the business. What they are using is a voice pick. In other words, it's a headset because produce has, it, it's difficult to scan what the produce barcode. So it's multiple language I tell the, the picker, pick up 500 tomatoes, 700 cucumbers, 
300 cauliflower and send it out. They achieve a million dollar return investment in two years of the initial, initial investment. Next, Jim, please. Next slide, Jim. That's a case study that was done by independent company. It shows how they were able to maintain the inventory, which is very perishable. Remember, it produce and achieve, manage to quadruple the company by having the right software and the right tool to, man, to maintain it. This was done by an independent company addressing the cost, the benefits, and the reduced shrinkage. The produce come in and go out the same way, the same day, which avoids, avoids spoilers, spoilages. Next slide, Jim. So Danny will now cover the integrated ERP benefits, and close this out. <clears throat> That's the benefits of one inter integrated software, ERP software. It has warehouse management, it has financials, it has an analytic, and it's a one database without having to search multiple databases. Because if you have multiple databases, you run into the integration issue. Try to fit a Mercedes engine into an audio transmission. It tells you what products are profitable. The last thing you want to do is buy a product that will not sell like the target story that is stuck with the inventory. So the analytic tells you which are the profitable product, who to buy it from, when to buy, and how much to buy. Landed cost is a separate issue. The fluctual of the freight, it goes from $25,000 to $35,000. You have to know the cost of the item or the inventory when it reaches the warehouse and average it. A friend of mine who's an outsource CFO has a client that has packages coming at $1 or $10 and had problem averaging the cost, which results in sold the product at lower cost. The average cost, the landed cost become the most important issue today because of the high cost of the shipments, which is unreliable as well. Next slide, Jim. That's a different issue. That's a brand new issue we encounter today that the banks and the insurance require you. Speaking to a bank executive, the issue was, if my client got out of business, I own the inventory. The insurance company are worried if you have a disaster, fire, hurricane or something, some of your inventory might not be sellable. So by you being able to download the inventory at the click, click of an icon and email it to them in Excel spreadsheet, gives them the comfort level you have accurate inventory. Also in the m and when, when you sell your company, if you cannot provide accurate inventory in a spreadsheet, the buyer will give you money, less money, the seller will give you less money for the buyer because they don't trust the inventory. If you don't have the information, you will have credit line being lowered or canceled and will affect, it's a, it's a, fetch, it's a volatile environment we're facing now. Next. Next, Jim slide. Those are return investment. Imperial debt went from a hundred million dollar to a billion dollar in a matter of 10 years doing M&As with a single database, integrated database software. Black River has voice pick and achieved in 2.3 years over a million dollar. And Atom Heart achieving the manufacturing the single database for manufacturing, distribution, and food. That's part of the offering. You can, a client can have a cloud or a server location option. 90% of people go with the cloud today. 
but if a, cl a client does not have good internet connection, it can use the server. The source code is provided and, and it can, can be customized to the business need. In other words, you don't have to have a, a square peg in a round pole, change your business to meet the software. If you have a hundred users, you can buy unlimited users, which is a case of an M&A. Today you have 150 users and buying a competitor, you have 250 users. You will not have to pay for additional users. And it integrates to multiple vendors. A good, a good example is drug capacity. As a software that tells you how much will fit on each truck and it keeps track on it over the car, of, of the truck movement, like a like map quest. And it's for the software is for mid-market companies, manufacturing, distribution of food that need fully integrated software without having to buy a third party software to try to pull it together. Next slide, Jim. So we're, we're gonna wrap it up now. So thanks everyone. I appreciate everyone coming in and I apologize for starting a little bit uh, late, but uh, we were able to end at the top of the hour and we hope that uh, to see you on our next webinar to close it out on July 27th, where we talk on the M&A integration of realizing seamless integration to scale your business using ERPs from a supply chain uh, and supply chain risk perspective and how to build that. So we look forward to uh, you joining us then. And again, EIG uh, really uh, appreciates your time and effort. Uh, we are a group of consultants, consulting companies and SaaS providers like Danny and uh, Greg here from the consortium, part of EIG. We have great solution providers as, as you can see. And we're here to help you with any of your needs from a people, process, data, and technology perspective. This is an overview of all of our partners. And you can see Greg and Danny in there in the mix. And again, we thank you for joining us. And with that, uh, any closing comments, Greg and Danny? Danny, you first. The most important, the most important thing in today's reality is have integrated software, integrated ERP software. Because if, have, if you have vendor for multiple vendors, you have integration issues and support. AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, it's not my fault, calling multiple vendor. In the meantime, your company is suffering, not having the ability to function well. Thanks, Danny and Greg. Yep, uh, I'll uh, finish with this. Uh, why are we harping about visibility for your supply base? Because of this. Remember, what you don't know about your supply chain can and will hurt you. That's a great way to end it. It's hard to top that, Greg. So thanks, everyone. And Danny, thank you. Greg, thank you. And thank you all for joining us. And we look forward to our next webinar next month. And again, we have a few more webinars. Uh, check out our EIG website for the latest, consultingeig.com. Thank you and have a great day and a great weekend. Cheers.